welcome again to the NPTEL course on storage systems. In the previous class, we were looking at how message ordering, if not done well, can create compli complications. And uh, today we will look at this in slightly more detail. I should first mention that this is a slightly tricky subject, and uh, there has been a lot of uh, let us say a lot of research work done in the last 20 years or so and there has been a lot of uh, lot of uh, let us say controversy on some aspects also. For example, the people who build systems, they might have a certain model of how things should work and then uh, if people who are more trained in the mathematical side of things, they come and look at it, they might have a different perspective on what is going on. And there has been an interesting exchange of ideas or even controversy among these two communities and this area is one such uh, interesting area. It is, uh, so there is a lot of subtlety and depth in this area. So, I will try to mention some aspect of it in this particular talk today. So, let us look at again the whole issue is about message ordering in the context of failures and how if you can somehow make the job of the programmer easier. So, that is the whole idea. Okay. So, let us first uh, make some definitions. First of all, we can have what is the notion of a static and dynamic membership in a group. What is static? There is typically a mapping between some hardware or some such entity and processes that are restarted on failure. So, the typical model is that it is restarted on failure. The dynamic situation, you start a new process, it joins the system and then it leaves the system termination, failure disconnection, it never comes back again. Again, if somebody else comes in, it is a new process, it is not the old thing that has been restarted. Okay. So, in this case, it is always somewhat static. If something dies, it comes back again with its same ID in some sense. Here, the IDs are keeping on changing okay, if somebody comes and goes. So, that is one part of the one definition. There is also something called dynamically uniform, which is a slightly more subtle concept. Let me explain what this is. Okay. If any process performs some action, all processes that remain operational also perform it. So, what does that mean? I could do something and then if I end up doing that, then whoever is in that group should also do it irrespective of whether I live or die. Okay. So, sometimes it is very critical that this happens. For example, in a commit kind of protocol, if one of them is committed, everybody else also should also commit. Again, let us take a slight different example. Suppose you have a parallel file system and different processes are doing some computations on different portions of the file. It is a basically parallel file system. The file is a very long one. Let us say it is about 10 gigabytes. There are 24 processes or 25 whatever 100 processes working on that one 10 gigabyte file. Each one has got a certain domain in which it is operating. If one of them updates one part of it and dies, it is important that other processes in respect to whatever happened, they also should update it. Otherwise, what will happen, what will happen is that you will have some updates from this guy, but no updates from other guys. So, it is some kind of mixture between some updates made by this party and no updates by other parties. So, those things are somewhat problematic. So, what is in dynamically uniform? Again, I will show you by an example by diagram. Suppose you have a some sender S, it is doing a multicast. So, it is going to A, B, C, D. Okay. Now, S sends a multicast and it dies. Similarly, A gets it, it does whatever has been done and dies. And this B, C, D they are surviving. Our interest is that if A gets something and does something because of receiving that message from S, it is very important that B, C, D also actually act on it. This is what they call dynamically uniform, irrespective of what failures. The minute a message is delivered to one party, it is absolutely critical that everybody else also sees it, even if the whoever has got it die before other parties get the message. Okay. 
So again, in spite of crash at center S, if message delivered at A, it will be delivered at BCD. Okay. So, for example, that is reason why commit protocols or Paxos, etc., they have this model. If somebody has committed somewhere, does not matter if that party is not living, you also have to commit. Similarly, in Paxos, if somebody has in a consensus kind of algorithm, right? If somebody has accepted this and there is a majority and that has been accepted as the for that particular round as the agreed upon value. Everybody also should do it irrespective of who lives and who dies. Okay. So this is a critical thing in many situations, but the other situations which is what is called non-dynamically uniform. If I send a crash, and we can even assume there is some kind of partition. I sent some stuff to this guy. There was some partition that came along. Therefore, this message is somewhat never made it to any of these places. Okay. So these applications here never receive that message. And it is okay in those kind of situations to not the server if not get the message and nothing really matters. Okay. For example, if you are an air traffic control system, somebody is giving updates of the current aircraft that is out there. This could be display stations A, B, C, D. The fact that the new updated view of what aircraft is being seen is not available B, C, D is not, it's not really a serious issue. Okay. Whereas, if I am issuing money from an ATM for example and it has debited the money from the, from the database or whatever, but that ATM itself has a mechanical malfunction, right? it does not give the money, that is a bad situation. right? Basically, if in case it has committed there, irrespective of what happens, somebody has to know that is ATM malfunctioned and it will actually keep track of it and again try to deliver it the money to you somehow. If it does its uh, job of debiting it from the database your account but does not take care to ensure that you get your money then something is wrong because you can see all this is are distributed in space and time. Something is happening in database somewhere else, something is happening at the ATM the mechanical contraption that is giving you the money and if it is a dynamic uniform system then if something has been had something has happened to the database, it will happen also at the mechanical contraption of ATM where you are using it. Okay. It cannot just assume that the database failed okay. and none of these fellows were, none of the ATMs were or the ATM was informed about it. You can keep quiet, okay. that does not work, okay. it is not a sensible thing. Okay. So, that is where, so this is a dynamically informed system which is a slightly more complicated system. Okay. Basically, because there are externally visible actions that are critical. Okay. So, okay, there are two or three issues here. This is slightly different from the commit also. Okay. I mentioned that uh, dynamic inform and commit are similar, but there is some difference there also. Okay. So, if you look at this particular diagram, if some of these guys die, it is okay that these guys do not see it. Okay. Whereas, in a commit protocol, because you are assuming that they are going to be restarted, okay, they have to be, it is important that the message actually goes, goes to them also. Okay. So, basically in a dynamic uniform system, what is guaranteed that if a party does something, right? The all process that remain operational that is important. Okay. That is the difference between commit and dynamic uniform. Okay. Despite some there is some subtlety here that we should remember. Okay. Basically, what it means is that one process has done something, whoever remains operational from that time onwards should also do it. Okay. Whereas in a commit protocol, all of them have to do it, irrespective of failures, because all of them have to commit. So, if some of them fail, they have to restart again, they have to set the system right and then do it. Okay, that is a difference there. Okay. So, in a sense, you might say dynamic reform is somewhere between um, the model of uh, commit and the one which is the previous model, the uh, different from 
the dynamic one and the one which is the commit one okay there is some difference there okay, okay. so that is one okay. So, in a non uniformly dynamic system states and actions are processed subsequently fail discarded okay operational part of the system defines the system okay. So, so this is slightly more easier so just imagine what has to be done in the case of dynamic uniform what you have to do is if any time a message goes to for example let us say there is a nodes there is a node 1, 2, 3, 4 the process is A, B, C, D. So, a message goes to node 1. Now, what you have to do for dynamic uniform is you have to ensure that these messages are received at 2, 3, 4, they are buffered, they do some kind of a protocol saying that all of us received the message, whoever is surviving, okay. And once that is done, then A will then at this point you deliver it. And B, C, D having got those things earlier on, they will also have saved it persistently. So, in case A has actually it has been delivered to A, the process A in node 1, then it is possible for us to make sure that node 2 also delivers it to process B and node 3 gives it to C and all those who actually survive after this was delivered at this point. Okay. That means that there has to be a lot of uh, uh, activity that has happened before you can deliver the message to a, the processes A, B, C, D. Okay. That means first you have to send the messages to all the nodes, all of them agree that they have received a message, all of them agree that they can store it in a stable storage of some kind, right. And then once you, one of them has delivered it, other parties also can assure that it can be done. Okay, other is not possible. So, in a non dynamic uniform system, you do not have to do all these things. Okay, because what you say is whatever is remaining, it is okay because we can do uh, delivery for whatever part of the system that remains. Okay. So, similarly, for the same reason, there are two types of what is called failure atomic multicast. Okay. One is a dynamic uniform, the other one is non uniform. What is in the case of dynamic uniform? If it is a case that a um, suppose you send a message m, okay, and uh, if p delivers this message m, okay, that means it is guaranteed because of dynamic uniform that in any future execution, okay, there is some feature after this, right? Because once p has delivered m there is something else is going to come after that. It is guaranteed the minute it has delivered to m, it knows that in the future execution in which a set of process remain operational, okay. There is some set of process that remain operational, okay, okay. There is a guarantee that the delivery of m, okay, among that set of process also is guaranteed, okay. So, that is basically dynamic uniform protocol. Whereas, in a non uniform protocol okay if p knows that if both the sender of m and p crash okay m may not reach its other destinations the fact that it has been delivered in p but if p as well as the sender both crash okay is perfectly okay that the message m does not go to other guys whereas here the important thing is that the minute one process in one at one node, one the message m has been delivered. Then it is some of the system has to do something, whatever has to be done, to ensure that it goes to all the other remaining operational processes. Okay, okay that's a difference. Okay, there are some situations where this important, or some situations where this important. Okay, so typically, if there is some kind of a persistent state that has to be there and has got externally visible actions this is important. If there are no seriously what important externally visible actions this may be ok. okay. So, there are a few more definitions 
there is a notion of what is called reliable broadcast or mcast. Sometimes in some places we will call it a cast instead of referring to broadcast or mcast that is multicast or broadcast we will refer to it as in general as a cast hmm? that is what we are calling cast here. Hmm? Now what is the we have to decide what is the correct what, what is the correct process the correct process is one which has not failed okay. That means it is all we are now talking taking care of we are talking about what is called um, fail stop processes that means when they fail they stop they do not lie they do not do Byzantine things okay. So, what is the correct process the correct process is one it does not has not failed. So, if I just say a process it may mean it is possible that during whatever we are doing it may fail whereas if I say it is a cor correct process it means that whatever I am talking about it does not fail during that time. So, what, what am I saying here what we are saying is in this reliable broadcast and cast we are only saying about correct processes that is that which do not fail during this particular operation. If the correct process cast message m all correct processes eventually deliver m ok. That means that none of these things the guy who has sent it or the guys who received none of them have failed during this particular process during this particular cast ok. If a correct process delivers m all correct processes eventually deliver m ok. This is the guy who started it the guy who has one of them has delivered it ok. He is also a recipient if one process recipe receives other process also receives ok ok. For any message every correct process delivers m at most once and only if m is cached ok. Okay. Again, this at most once is also not easy. Okay. I think you remember that in NFS you cannot really do this. Okay. That is why you need to have some logging going on there also. Okay. This is not trivial because you might retransmit. If have, there is a message loss, you will retransmit, and it is possible that the act did not go through, but the message went through. So, you can actually get more than one copy of the message. That means that somebody on the receiving side should keep track of it and drop the second one. Okay, so this also are not trivial. Okay, okay. So this is the case with we are only discussing about correct processes. Just like in the case of the dynamically informed situation, we can also have a uniform model corresponding to this cast. Okay, so this is differs in with respect to character faulty process. Okay. So, we are talking now about faulty process again if you remember our previous discussion commit protocols versus consensus protocols right they differ with respect to failures commit protocols irrespective of failures you really have to ensure that those parties that have failed actually reboot again and do something whereas in consensus protocols we do not care about those processes that fail. We are only talking about correct processes there, same thing here also. So, that is what this was the case. Whereas, in the case of uniformity, you are saying you can see the difference. Here we say a process delivers same, whereas here we say if a correct process that means that this process can deliver M and die, ok. Whereas, in this case, because the minute I say correct process delivers M, that means this process lives through this particular broadcast or MCAST, whereas here the process can deliver M and then die. So, if a one party succeeds in delivering it all correct process eventually deliver it. That is all those guys who survive right for after this guys delivered they actually deliver it ok. So, there is a small difference between these two things and it turns out that there are uh, if you are modeling all these things mathematically all this matter seriously ok. That is where there has been a lot of controversy in some of these issues again I will illustrate some other uh, details. So, given this kind of situations we need a model by which we can program our systems. We last time we looked at some issues which create complications when you are trying to program this kind of systems. So, there is one model which is called the geosynchrony model I introduced it briefly last time and Kenneth Berman from Cornell University and his students they developed it first. 
and uh, there are other models that various um, other research groups have come up with. I am going to follow most of the Burnman kind of model. Okay. So, in this particular talk, in this particular lecture. Okay. So, what exactly are we doing in this case? Here the idea is that somehow when messages are sent, you have to ensure that the messages are sent and received in the same view. What is a view? View is some notion of what all the processes that are up and running. Okay. And anytime a failure occurs, you are going to view that as a separate event which ensures that previous messages all are delivered by that time and then this failure event occurs and then again messages are sent. So, in a sense failure events somehow separate out the message sent previously and after. You get some kind of barrier. Okay. If you are able to do that, then programming of this kind of system becomes slightly easier. Okay. The whole idea is failure events are some kind of barriers. Now, it in principle it is not possible because while a message is going on, you can also fail, right? The message is in transit. So, what you have to do is to find a way in which you somehow delay the delivery of messages in such a way that you get this particular perspective. Real life, real systems are different, idea is to somehow move around things a bit. So, that you still have the same notion by which message is sent in a particular view, it is delivered in that view and then the failure occurs and then messages have again start taking place. Okay. So, that is basically what it is. Okay. So, what is the requirement? Each process at each time instant has a unique view of membership of the group. That means, when a failure occurs, atomically somehow everybody knows that that failed part is no longer part of the group. Okay. This is sort of instantaneous. Of course, there is nothing instantaneous. It has to be managed somehow, so that this kind of view is possible. Processes that proceed together two consecutive views deliver the same set of messages between these views. Okay. Again, what is a view again? I mentioned already what it means. It means a coherent idea of all the processes that are up and running. Okay. For example, I know that four processes are up and running, they are PQRS. Then one of them dies. Then let us say R dies. Then there is PQ and S. After this failure event, everybody else in the PQS knows that there are only three processes. Okay. Okay. That is basically what it is. And if processes that proceed through two consecutive views deliver the same set of messages between these views. Okay. And there is some ordering between this also, we will talk about that later. Okay. That also has to be possibly be followed. Okay. What is critical about this view synchronous model is each message associated with the view. So, each message is associated with the view. Okay. Every message is associated with the view and all send and receive for a message occur at processors with that view only, in that view only. Somehow you have to fake it somehow so that this happens. Very critical. Okay. Send and deliver events considered as a single instantaneous event. Somehow you have to find a way of making it happen. Okay. We will come to this soon. Okay. Basically, these are all abstract or impossible ways to for it to happen, but we will going to take this and try to come with a similar actual realistic model. Okay. So, essentially what we are talking about is this part all send and receive for a message occur at process that we okay. virtual synchrony is the actual model. And this basically used uses this view synchrony kind of idea to support a execution model so that it is easy to program. Okay. And this is defined in terms of a unrealizable close synchrony model, which I am going to talk about next. Okay. What is this uh, close synchrony model and how is that used to define virtual synchrony? That is what we are going to look into. What is the close synchronous execution model? First of all, I should mention again, repeat one more time, this is infeasible. Okay. Multicast delivered to all group members as a single reliable instantaneous event, okay. which of course makes it impossible. Okay. It is reliable communication, it is not like TCP streams that can break unreliably at different times as seen by different people. So, it is not like TCP, it is reliable communication. So, if the group expands, okay, 
membership of group fixed or the deliverer of a m cast that is suppose i am trying to send a message multicast the before i just about before i send it i have a membership of group i know exactly who is who all are part of the group okay. delivery ordering of concurrent messages what are concurrent messages there is no way in which you can order the messages there is this one at the most a partial order amongst messages concurrent messages there is no way to order them different multicast distinct and ordered same so if there are two different multicast which are distinct they are ordered in the same way across all of them all the process that receive it this is a delivery ordering of related messages suppose there is some relation between messages okay that is one is uh, there is a uh, reason why they are related one happens first it does something because of that because it's causally connected to the second one right then something else happens so this is a causal kind related messages then i have to ensure that the messages that are received that same causal order is possible okay so again we will go into this in greater detail later but this is uh, we are interested in a particular abstract model where either the messages are concurrent and therefore they have no relationship with, with among themselves okay but whatever the messages are there they will be received by all the parties in same way hmm? if they are related then i also have to make sure that they are received in the same causal order okay the state transfer happens at well defined points for example when a new member comes in it's a the new the group goes through a new state okay field automaticity what we are going to say is that the m cast is a single logical event okay similarly failure reporting through group membership changes that are ordered with respect to multicast again any failure that happens is some kind of a atomic event okay so we want to ensure that all this m cast or failure events they are seen as atomic events okay so that you can decide how to order them okay. now these things definitely some of them very uh, difficult to achieve but if you have something of the kind it makes programming easier okay so what is virtual synchrony it is basically the same as this but you can permit asynchronous executions which has to be same as something similar to this okay but and it has to be indistinguishable i think it's similar to the way that when you're talking about serializability amongst transactions what are we talking about serializability in transactions they are actually concurrent but what we say is two sets of transactions are serializable in case there is this the two even if executed concurrently they have the same effect as some order some arbitrary order in which the two transactions are executed in a serial manner right Just similar to this also we say a virtual synchrony is something which is look at a closely synchronous execution models of the various events are taking place you are saying that your virtual synchrony it's a virtual synchrony in case you can show that whatever way you reorder things it is corresponding to one some close synchronous execution any one it doesn't matter which one okay so again just to recapitulate if you look at serializability of transactions what are we doing there actually the transactions are concurrent so they are actually reading and writing data possibly which are shared at the same time right and so your concurrent transaction manager will do something to ensure that locking etc will take care of that problem but suppose say that suppose we say that the two transactions now it is serializable these two transactions are serial serializable in case you can order them as a followed by b transaction a followed by transaction b or transaction b followed by transaction a okay so the effect of the concurrent execution should be either a followed by b or b followed by a that's all that matters we don't say we don't specify it has to be a comma b it doesn't matter if it's a or b or b followed by a, okay that's what is the serializability here also same situation i want 
the stretch will be such a way, in such a way that I can reorder things in such a way that whatever way I reorder it, it should be corresponding to one close synchronous execution. Okay. So, because of this, I don't I can drop the notion of instantaneous. Okay. As long as I am able to show that this virtual synchronous execution is can be seen to be equivalent to some close synchronous execution. Okay, I am done. Okay. So, permits asynchronous executions for which there exists some closely synchronous execution indistinguishable from the asynchronous one. Okay. So, that is basically virtual synchrony. Okay. Again, those processes, process groups in which failures or messages are ordered that way, they are called virtually synchronous process groups. Again, let us try to see some of the differences here. Okay. Now, various types of models are possible. You have transactional serializability, but as you mentioned earlier, in transactional, you focus on isolation of concurrent transactions and there is persistent data and rollback. Okay. The focus is on isolation of concurrent transactions, that is where serializability comes into picture. Okay. Both virtual synchrony and transaction order, right? They basically order based execution. Because there is some kind of ordering you have to ensure. Okay. What is different about virtual synchrony is that there is direct cooperation between group members, failure handling, and dynamic reconfiguration to make progress even when partial failures occur. Okay. This part of it is not really part of the serializability aspect, that is independent. Okay. Even commit, for example, the protocols we looked at, it is some kind of a Reliable multicast. We are not talking about concurrent transactions, etc. We are talking about agreement amongst a group of them. There is no concurrency as per se here. Okay, that's why this is different from this. Okay, but we are also just like transactional. We are also concerned about durability. If you look at multicast delivery, let's say if you're talking about IP multicast, so the guarantees are much much weaker. Whereas in the case of multicast, the way we are talking about whether it is dynamic uniform or whether it is non-uniform, we are giving slightly stronger guarantees. This IP, IP cast kind of multicast for example, that is far less, uh, much less guarantees are given. Okay. Now, we can define what is called a group membership service. Okay. Now, there are some subtleties here also. Because one of the problems about the FLP result is that the Fisher Lynch Patterson result is that you cannot figure out if somebody is actually extremely slow or dead, right. So, at the most, you can suspect somebody being not live, okay. So, there are some complications because of this. Again, we looked at the split brain problem as well as the Mexican shootout that also will crop up here. So, the behavior actually depends on how the fail, failures or supposed failures actually play themselves out. Suppose a process P suspects that process Q is faulty. Okay. Ideally, what you want, you might want to think is if P itself remains in the system, Q will eventually be excluded from it. Right? P is suspecting something and if P itself is not faulty, then if uh, Q is indeed faulty, then Q has to be taken out. Okay. But the problem for us is that uh, P itself might be excluded. Again, we are talking about the Mexican shootout that same situation. Both P and Q might be excluded because each suspect the other. Okay. As we discussed that time also, system as a whole prevented from making progress if less than majority of the participants in the previous system do remain operational because sometimes what happens is that some quorum is not established therefore, you cannot really make any progress. Okay. Basically, the you really cannot decide what to do in those kind of situations if the quorum is not there. You just have to muddle along till something happens so that again quorum is established. Right. So, instead of this particular type of description, 
people have uh, again people have tried to model it carefully they have decided that instead of this particular model if p remains okay this is if p suspects failure of q then q eventually squirm system unless p itself is okay. so this turns out to be a slightly better spec than this one okay. so various theoretical models have come up where they try to use this kind of models as I mentioned, this area is full of uh, complications, and uh, lot of different theoretical models have come up where you make mild changes here in the axioms, you might call it, and different kinds of things have come up from it. Okay. Okay. Let's just look at some of the issues again. It's like basically our problem is partitions, right? If there is a partition, what I would like to ensure in these protocols, progress should happen only in the primary component. Suppose you are an air traffic control system, various parties are trying to get the aircraft into reasonable situations, part of the system, one part of it gets disconnected. So what we would like to do is that there should be progress only in the primary component, there should not be inconsistent actions taken in two different partitions because that can be extremely risky. So what we are saying is that somehow we have to decide which is the primary component. Okay. So, in non-primary, at the most you can do safe actions, it means it does not update anything, at the most it can read things, it can it can only uh, do what is called safe actions. Okay. Suppose there is a process P which is ejected from primary, okay. then as we discussed earlier, you can have what is called a split bend problem if P does not know that has been ejected. If it does not know it is ejected, it can go ahead and start updating it. Instead of indulging only in safe actions, it can start updating things and can get to problems. Okay. There is also the views should be causally ordered. Okay. Again, we will talk about this later. If the partition heals, you may want to merge the two partitions. Again, this is a complicated thing about how to merge partitions if they heal. And this is something which also many people have faced. If you have what is called um, uh, when you develop software, you have uh, various control version systems, version systems, and when you might also have the merging operations there. Same similar issue also crop up here also. Okay, you have to make the state of the system consistent. There is the merging operation also. Okay, one critical thing in this kind of systems is that, again, we discussed also in context of Paxos. If there is a a new primary component because of some failures, there should be some overlap with that of the previous one. Okay. This is also critical. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you will find that uh, you need something like a two phase commit or three phase commit protocols to make all this happen. So, I will just go into some details about that. So, what is the basically we are trying to do membership, we okay, are trying to figure out who is there, who is not there okay, because some failures are taken place, I am going to try to figure out who is out there. Mm -hmm. In the first phase, list of add delete events sent to all including coordinator and the acknowledgements or uh, anybody who gets it should act. The second phase, the coordinator waits for majority facts. If majority acts, you get back, you commit updates including failures that happened during the first phase. Okay. Again, you can see this is also will introduce certain complications, but we will assume that some of this can be handled. Mm -hmm. And all update new view. The majority do not respond, wait till communication restored or run a special protocol. Must prevent a new primary component in which condition not part. Okay, because uh, this in principle is impossible, but you should try to ensure that the new primary component, okay, if it is not part of the, if the coordination is not part of the new primary component, then 
it creates certain complications. Okay. So it is better to prevent it. Okay. I am not going to into detail about this part. Okay. So in three phase commit, if uh, you are going to have a new coordinator, there is an election here if coordinator fails and uh, you informs at least majority about coordinator failure okay because new coordinator informs that there has been a coordinator failure collects acknowledgements and current membership inform from all proposes new membership during the whatever new events are taking place add or delete events okay and then it goes back to essentially you can again restart from two phase commit okay so basically our problem is either the minority may not respond or the coordinate might fail if the coordinate fails then you get blocked right just like in a two phase commit situation okay if you want to avoid the two phase commit blocking you have to elect a new coordinator and basically for the same reasons we discussed previously you again have to propose a new membership and then you have to restart the protocol again and see if you can get agreement again okay so you can go back and forth between two phase and uh, the way Berman has decide, uh, described it he basically combines two phase commit and three phase commit so uh, you get some interesting optimizations so what are the various requirements in the i think let let me let us summarize requirements here okay, for virtual system of system use right every view is basically some idea about exactly who are living while responding. Initial system view at system start, subsequent views differ by the addition deletion process. Okay. Again, these are all axiomatic things which are needed for mathematical modeling. Only processes that request to be added to the system are added. Only processes suspected of failure or that request to leave system are deleted. Okay. Majority of processes in view i must acquiesce in composition of view i plus 1. So some kind of quorum is there. Without quorum, you don't do. Okay. Starting from initial view, system view, subsequences of a single sequence of system views reported to system members. E system member observes a subsequence starting with a view in which was first added to system, and continuing until it fails, leaves the system or is excluded from the system. Okay. If process P suspects process Q of being faulty, then the core service, right? Basically, the group and membership service is able to put new views. Either Q will drop from the system, or P will be dropped, or both. Okay. So basically, the idea is that if this particular system is live, okay, again, this is another condition. Okay. The core GMS service is able to report new views. Because of our FLP kind of results, it's, this is also not possible to guarantee in all cases. That's why there's an if here. If the core GM is able to report new views, either Q will drop from the system or Q will drop or both. In a system with synchronized clocks and bounded message latencies, any process dropped from the system view will know within bounded time. Again, you will see all this within bounded time, etc. Again, all the while since we started talking about NFS and consistent problems, you notice that almost all the important guarantees are given in terms of some eventual that eventuality will happen. And here we are talking about assuming that the synchronized clock. Okay, so that's why we are able to say within bounded time. If you don't have synchronized clocks, you can't give any of these guarantees. And actually, it turns out synchronizing, synchronizing clocks itself is a very hard problem. I think we discussed it, mentioned briefly, but I will 
mentioned in slightly more detail in the next slide. Okay. This actually is an interesting problem that in many common situations synchronized clocks are actually impossible. Okay. Let us just look at how that is. Okay. Suppose you have two nodes P and Q with two clocks. Let us say the clock P is ideal. So, the time is equal to T and clock Q is the one which is slightly off. So, it is actually since ideal this is actual true time. So, this is basically A times T plus B. A is the shift skew and B is the offset. Okay. Instead of going at 45 degrees, it is going at a slightly different angle and also there is an offset. Now, suppose I make the critical assumption delays are asymmetric. Okay. That is from P to Q the delay is D1, from Q to P is D2. Okay. Now, what do we have to decide? Okay. Basically, if I want to synchronize clocks, I have to decide what A, B and D1, D2 are. Okay. So, you do any set of network packet exchanges. Okay. It has been shown that it is impossible to do so. Okay. Basically, it turns out if you draw the diagrams and write these equations corresponding to when something was sent and something was received on the other side and reason about it you can actually get some kind of matrices and the matrices it turns out for determining 4 of them you should have a rank 4 matrix it turns out to be rank 3 therefore, it is not possible to get these values. Okay. But what is interesting is that if you either drop this asymmetric situation or if you are interested in the round trip delay then it is feasible to determine in this model. Okay. So, when we talk about this, this within bounded time also is slightly problematic okay, because in principle this assuming synchronized clocks is too strong. Okay. It is actually not a uh, feasible system in many situations because the delays are often asymmetric. Why is it asymmetric? Because you could be between certain either bridges or routers and various things and it may be that the paths you take are asymmetric. Okay. So, it is not really guaranteed that both are asymmetric okay. and it is even more so suppose you are in a wireless situation it turns out that uh, your message going one direction depends on the condition of the channel radio channel. Okay. So, therefore, D1 and D2 could be quite different it depends on when you send it. Okay. So, all these things are in practice quite reasonable the fact that delays are asymmetric therefore, if that is the case then what we assume here is actually also problematic that means that typically this also you cannot assume. So, that is a desirable set of things. So, as I mentioned it is not easy, but let us proceed all the same okay, because our idea is to come up with engineering solutions. So, for that we can we can if you have a group membership service we can have the following kind of API. What does it do? We can say join PID callback it returns basically the time you joined and the the list of members. Okay. So, callback is called when membership change. For example, the PID joined. So, if some new guy comes in, he is informed to update its use that okay, new guy is coming. What is interesting about this is item potent. If join fails, can you shoot again to some other JMS server? Again, what we are assuming is there is not a this the group membership service is actually it has to be highly resilient service in itself right. So, this itself should have multiple nodes and if one of them fails somebody else should be able to take over. Okay. So, what I am saying is that I in case I make this call and this I get a, a response saying that it is not okay. okay. 
you can again reassure it because I didn't put it. Okay. Same thing with leave. I can keep trying to leave till somebody says yes, you can leave. Okay. What is monitor? Again, you want to find out if a particular PID something happens to it. So I'm basically saying, um, I'm basically saying this this is a process I'm interested in, and then please monitor it. It's telling the service, okay? And so in case something happens to this, the PID fails, then GMS itself calls back this call back on using the PID as the parameter. Again, this also has to be designed at input so that in spite of whatever happens, it just can repeat it one more time. Okay. And there will be some other because we are talking about there is a core set of services nodes which are actually giving you a group membership service and that itself has to be replicated and if one of them fails, somebody else is there to look after it. So, the, if it is idempotent, it does not matter if something fails, you can just repeat it. I will uh, briefly introduce ordering semantics today, but to, uh, in the next class we will go into in greater detail. Okay. Now, so far we talked about how to handle failures, okay, how to ensure that the failure looks like atomic, so that I can, is something like a barrier, the, all the messages before and all the messages afterwards. That is what we are trying to do. Now, the question is about sending the message itself. You can either have no semantics whatsoever, let it happen whatever the way it happens. It can have happen in the FIFO model. The process cast m before m prime, that is the same process, okay. I am sending, okay. I send m, I send m before m prime, okay. Then no correct process delivers m prime before m. That means that everybody also should get m first followed by m prime. Okay. That is because I am able to order the things at my side, everybody else should be able to order it at their side also in the same way. Okay. This is something called causal. If cast of m precedes m prime, no correct process delivers m prime before m. Now, this precede itself, there is a technical definition for it. Okay. What is the technical definition? Basically, we do it in terms of events. And that events basically can be used to define the precedence relation with respect to messages. Okay. So what is this? This again, Lamport has has defined this particular model. What exactly is this? It's a very familiar model. The process executes both E and F in that order. That is, E is I execute E first followed by F. That's I in my system in my node okay, I execute E first followed by F. Therefore, E, e before F. That's very non controversial right there is no problem because I am doing it in the same node I do E then I do F therefore E should be for F. Suppose I it is across nodes now this is, a, this is a definition with respect to across nodes what is it E is the cache of some message M and F is the delivery of M at some process that is I sent a message E is the thing which I is initiating broadcast or multicast at my node, some my node for example, and f is the delivery of m at some process. Then I say that e precedes f, that is sending has to precede the delivery, receiving. It is a very simple model, okay. okay. Or there is an event h such that e precedes h and h precedes f. That is, I do something, there is somebody else who follows in the precedence relationship with respect to uh, using one of these or recursively there is something which comes after that and that itself is before f therefore e is before f okay that's the reason that's what we call saying that if an m cast or a broadcast m proceeds m prime the definition is this in case this is not this particular precedence doesn't apply they are concurrent there's no way to order them that means there is no way in which they could have ever been causally connected to the other Therefore, they are actually concurrent. Okay. So, this is the order. So, basically, in causal, what it says is that if in some way you can show that m precedes m prime in the causal definition, this using this order, this one, you have to guarantee that no correct process delivers m prime for m. Okay. So, the other models also, I will continue with, I just want to introduce the kind of ordering that also has to be looked into 
as part of this whole definition okay? and then we will uh, go further detail in the ordering part of it in next class and hopefully conclude it with respect to all the required things with respect to failures as well as missed order okay, in next class. Thank you.